Hello, my name is Emery Chow Johnson. My gender pronouns are they, them, and I am the director of the short film To Write From Memory, which is in the Generation 14 Plus program at the 2023 Berlin Hallet. The film is about how memories seep into a young trans person's everyday flow despite their uh, best attempts to distance themselves from them. And so, thank you. Thank you. If you had to guess, Mitsi Ba. Hi, welcome to the Teddy TV. My name is Jean Bor Bobak, and this time we are discussing the film To Write from Memory. Hi, welcome to the Teddy, welcome to the Berlinale. Um, thank you for being here with us today. Um, let's just start with uh, what was your starting point um, for the film? Where where did you get the inspiration for it? I was fortunate enough to have been introduced to some uh, key texts in, in queer studies, uh -huh. um, namely Jose Esteban Munoz's uh, Cruising Utopia, The Then and There of Queer Futurity. And there was a a line in that um, introduction, um, and it goes by, uh, the past does things. And that really kind of inspi inspired me to think about how um, the, the past lives on in the present day, and that um, we never really kind of move on from the past. Rather, it kind of um, continues to be part of our everyday lives, and we move forward with that. And so, and also kind of going off of um, uh, that text, I was interested in kind of this idea of um, potentiality in queer and trans um, domestic spaces and domestic everyday lives. So even in the seemingly um, mundane moments, um, we can find an opening to um, the an, an event and the the non-event. Um, for instance, in to write from memory, um, the use of this audio archive kind of creates uh, multiple worlds that the protagonist kind of yeah. um, experiences in their everyday. Yeah, tell us a bit about this this audio archive that is like such an integral part of the of the film. Um, where does it come from? How did you construct it? Um, and so on and so forth. Yeah, with the, the audio archive, I was really interested in how um, I guess in a uh, in the trans experience, how much the the voice and how you you can communicate or or not communicate or or miscommunicate um, even your your identity by how your voice is um, produced by your own vocal cords or how it's um, received by other people. So part of the um, the audio archive is this idea of kind of marking this this multiple identity of a trans person based off of different time periods. Um, but at the same time, and kind of thinking about the, uh, I guess the transitional experience is the idea that you can be all these different selves at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, with the audio archive as well, I was interested in how um, through a sound recording, um, you can play it w whenever you want. And it's in a sense, at any moment you can listen to it and it's kind of a a soundtrack in your your present life and it can transport you to different um moments of feeling um the audio archive i think it's also um in con constructing it i wanted to kind of ask how we legitimize different types of um archives or whether it might be a oral history archive versus um something that's more um, objective, like maybe sound files. So in kind of going through this effort of uh, as if recreating an audio archive, I kind of wanted to um, kind of question how we, uh, how much weight we carry towards our our memories versus um, 
physical objects and, and things and what stories they can they can tell yeah that's very interesting because in a sense um it also sort of relates to um to this idea of an archive of feelings that Ann Svetkovich put uh, forward um and in a way that also resonated with me when i was when i was watching the film um to what extent would you would you consider the moving image or film as like a potential form or mode of an archive of feelings mm. archive of feelings yes I, I really enjoy that in terms of the moving image as a archive of feelings um because i think more more recently i found that it is through um moving image and other artworks that mm -hmm. you can so immediately start to talk about your your feelings and emotions that arise from your engagement with with a work um so i think i i would hope that um mm -hmm. uh, my, my work can as aspire to be um a source of of uh of feelings um of ar a shared archival feelings um because with this work i think it's um uh, loosely based on personal experience along with um a shared experience of other um, people in the queer and trans community who may have um, had similar experiences or similar emotions as myself and as this this film might evoke or um, allow them to resonate with yeah right in that sense it's it's an interesting meeting point of fictional and documentary storytelling in the film can you tell us a bit about um, your approach to this mm, yes so as um i i was kind of interested in how um uh, i could play with uh, the documentary form through this this work um, i was most curious about kind of autobiographical documentary filmmaking uh, and performative um, documentary and how oftentimes in like the, the personal video diary, that sort of um, aesthetic, there seems to be this uh, expectation of authenticity um, from the audience. So through this work, I wanted to kind of uh, play and kind of subvert those expectations um, through um, mixing this performative nature of the piece um that is also grounded in reality through anchors such as um ritual and kind of the the objects that the uh, protagonist um, engages with yeah you utilize quite often uh throughout the film mirror shots um which i think was very prevalent um what was uh what was your idea behind that or or what was your aim with mm -hmm. such a frequent use of of these type of of shots mm -hmm. um I, I suppose with the the mirror shots i i feel like when we look into a mirror it's um we're trying to see ourselves and see a reflection of ourselves um but in terms of utilizing that within the the context of the film in the context of being watched um, um watching ourselves in the mirror and the the audience watching um the the subject i was kind of interested in seeing how the mirror can also play as a type of um uh create this intimate distance um even with the mirror like in the in the camera itself how it has these like layers of distance to kind of create like a sense of uh opacity between the the audience and the subject so in the sense it's also using these mirrors as a way to um evoke this distant intimacy and also this um also as a way to kind of play with um the expectations of authenticity and mm. immediacy and I suppose like this idea of rawness in the personal video diary style yeah um the film in a way 
um, organizes itself maybe by, let's say, three separate chapters, uh, so to speak, with body, blood, and miscommunication um, that kind of give a sort of structure um, to the film. Uh, can you tell us about about these um, this element of the film? Mm. Uh, I th I feel like in terms of um, the construction of the I guess the the chapter markers, mm -hmm. um, I think a part of the use of the testosterone vials and kind of assembling them into a a Chinese character um, is a way to have the characters or the, the vials to speak for themselves when the um, voices from the audio archive, but the, the mother and the, the child um, aren't able to um, uh, engage in, in, uh, on the same level at times. Mm -hmm. um, so in a way, kind of putting emotion and, and feeling into this assemblage of these just these vials, um, this glass is a way to kind of see how these objects are kind of extensions of ourselves um, and are part of our, I guess, archive of, of feeling in a sense. Yeah, right. And it was also, um very interesting to see how like there is this indeed this like sort of communication happening between this mother and son uh this mother and and child figure um but then um uh, there there are like this um breakdown in language in 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 communication and as you said there are these um this power imbalance often which somehow roots uh, back to language and um, a level of embeddedness in a certain culture. Um, can you explain a bit about um, how you approached this particular theme in the film? Mm. Yeah, I think with the, the, the language and this idea of um, lost in translation and having personal anecdotes being being shared um, from the mother's side was also an effort to kind of create empathy towards uh, both characters um, and to look into how um, kind of the, the mother character is not just the mother, right? It's um, having more than one version of themselves and trying to see um, the mother going through different um, experiences with gender identity and gender performance as well. Um, so in a sense, in terms of kind of uh, exploring those power imbalances, the imbalances between um, language and command of language uh, kind of was an effort to just gain better empathy towards each of the, the characters. Um, and I think in the the end of the film, um, despite or because of everything um, that was said and done, um, the, hopefully the protagonist leaves thinking um, that it's so okay to not be okay in, in some ways mm -hmm. or to that it's been part of their experience and it's now part of the, the fabric of their their multiple identities. Yeah, right. Um, I mean, overall, memory is very central to the piece, and you also already um, talked about it a bit. I I was very fascinated about, or like, it really made me think about this relationship that the that the film as as a as a medium can have in processing or working through memory and i was interested in 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 what's your take on that or or what kind of thoughts you had about this while working on the film mm. yeah I, I think in terms of thinking about um 
memory and kind of how memory shifts and, and changes and our relation to relationship to it changes and kind of this idea of creating this audio archive that might as well have, could have just been um played out as as memories and kind of kind of yeah i think for me it's like seeing how memory can can take flight and in film finding ways um through abstraction or through the visual style and how can you um kind of capture or grasp at these seemingly sometimes um ethereal abstract ideas like like memories like how can you kind of capture it and kind of um explore it in the moving image so i i think that's kind of one of my my aims in terms of how to um cinematically um engage with that and kind of represent it yeah the film is at once very like you really get the sense of of it being very personal but then also somehow um putting forward something a bit more um more general or maybe a bit more um specific to um to to trans experiences that are probably like collectively um shared uh, can you um talk a bit about this duality in the film mm. yeah in terms of the the more the personal versus perhaps speaking more to a universal um collective trans experience um part of the um the aims I had in terms of making this film was to kind of show a side of the trans experience that's not particularly marked by, I guess, milestones or mm -hmm. um, certain kind of points on a on a timeline, yeah. um, rather than to kind of blur blur it all up and through the use of the um audio archive and this current of of memory kind of um jumbles up all of the um timelines and jumbles up kind of how we move around in our uh identity and experience as a as a trans person so it's kind of kind of overlapping the different um uh timelines of the kind of past present and future and its relationship to a a un, never fixed uh, trans identity great emery thank you so much um uh, for thank you being for your questions um i wish you all the best for the berlinale and yeah hopefully we see each other in a few days at the festival yes see you soon